Today's a special day, obviously. I have the greatest people in the studio. I get along with everybody, but God knows I'm picky, and God knows I can be a little difficult if I'm demanding enough. Uh, right now, I'm gonna have a beautiful conversation with a great artist, a friend of mine, a woman that I met through Elizabeth Kemp. Once again, Kemp is the subject, she's the topic. Lauren Dalvia, thank you so much for coming and making the time for me. It's a really a great honor to be here. I love you. I love your work. I love your enthusiasm for art, for excellence, for the truth. And I love Elizabeth more than anything. And it's, it's, it's truly, truly an honor to be able, be able to speak about the craft and about her process and what, it, what it's like, you know, to be, to be, to work under her and work with her and be guided and led by her. It's, so thank you so much for asking me. You're welcome, honey. You have so much to say every time when we, even when we're texting, <laughs> even when we're getting all the messages and we're texting back and forth, your, your sensitivity, that's what I was saying right behind the cameras before we started, is so sky high. You, you're one of the few people who gets me, 100%. Um, you get me, Lauren, and um, I appreciate that. Uh, even the first time that I saw you with, with Kemp, when uh, I met you uh, in class, and your energy and your love and the circle and the dancing and sharing and all the love that you have for actors, because you love this craft, um, is sacred. It's, it, everything related to acting is sacred, but when it comes to you, describing actors and how well you know actors and how well you know the craft, it becomes very special, very meaningful. Well, thank you. Um, I learned from the best and I learned as a child, I, you know, I worshiped the craft of acting and I worshiped greatness and I worshiped the truth and I worshiped love. And you know, when I found it, I became obsessed with it. And Basically, what that what that's always been for me is, you know, you you see something you love and you follow it and you follow it and you follow it and then you see who they loved and who they worked with and who they were obsessed with and you follow that, and I call that the golden thread. It's just it it's it's just my way of saying that we're all connected. We always find each other. We always get each other, men and women. But I love you because. I love, I love the way women can work with each other that really get each other. Like we have this ability to, to go beyond together. We consult each other. So the idea, like any energy of jealousy or and bullshit and competition, it's, you know, it's, for me, it's non-existent. We consult each other. That's what we do. Like we borrow from each other, we extol each other's virtues and use it. Like I, I cannot be you and you cannot be me, but isn't that fantastic? Like we celebrate each other and we take and we borrow bits and we, you know, we borrow each other's, um, you know, each other's grace and each other's, um, you know, each other's bravery. You know, but that's but that's what it was like. You know, we find each other on this planet, but that mood. That experience is what it was like in Elizabeth's classes. Like we, it's that level of safety and trust and experimentation that, that was conducive to the most beautiful experimentation. It, it makes, it made those classes and those workshops and those productions um, tantamount to church. 
you know, mm -hmm. the holiest church, like the truest theater you ever did see, mm -hmm. you know, that we got to experience that because it was totally, um, you know, it was totally raw and it was totally full of trust. You know, she, it, she helped us, to, you know, we dared to go where we didn't, you know, where we didn't think we could. Deep, 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 calling the deep. Calling That's the you, deep, man. calling the deep. Calling the deep. I remember even the, the way that you talk about the craft. I mean, in class, we share so many things and we share loss. Hmm. Losing my father, remember, back like almost three years ago. And then Mike Nichols, somebody that you look up to and admire quite deeply. They passed away almost around the same time. Mm -hmm. So I remember that when we were at the circle, um, celebrating life and honoring our loved ones, I remember that your love for Nichols, the, the loss that I had for my dad and how we connected with Kemp, with Elizabeth, and how we hugged each other, and how we cried that day, thinking about that. Um, it's very special, Lauren. Um, I want to start with you, with your first memory as an actor, when you decided that this is what you wanted to do. And then Kemp, coming to your life, obviously we're talking about Kemp, but we're talking about you first. So this is about you. If we can go back in time and think the first time that you said to yourself, okay, I want to be an actor. I want to be trained as an actor. If you remember that moment and what it was, what it meant to you. That moment was in my yellow bedroom um, with my with the lemon yellow walls and lemon lemon yellow everything on Lexington Drive in northern Westchester County I was four years old I had a television and a VCR in my room at four with full cable <laughs> which added to, which adds to my rain man tendencies with you know film knowledge and television knowledge nothing was censored I saw Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton in Cleopatra oh, yeah. on the television in my room. And I know every story about that movie since before Joe Mankiewicz having a heart attack, the drama, the high drama that went, you know, that went with the production of that film. It, you know, it, it, it later, it, it set, but it set the tone um, for a lot, uh, for a lot of guidance and a lot of love and that golden thread about which I spoke, but I saw them together perform, Taylor and Burton, and there was something, you know, she she was so beautiful and he was so beautiful, but what I saw that I became obsessed with was the truth, because their scenes together were incandescent. Mm -hmm absolutely incandescent uh -huh. and were so were so real to me um, you know and there was the and there was the fantasy and the costume and the beauty and the wilds you know the wild production of it um, but I remember that very vividly I became obsessed with both of them I immediately started watching um, both of their work, the films that they did together, I think they made about eight films together, some magnificent, you know, cinema's greatest ever, and some very forgettable, but um, I followed their work very closely. I followed his work as a writer and a poet and a reciter of poet and a lover of Dylan Thomas and all things Welsh, and I, and I followed her. Um, that was a seminal moment for me. Another seminal moment for me was around the same time, four or five, um, watching Annie starring Aileen Quinn and Carol Burnett, who just oh, so goes for amazing. broke. Like, have a little fun while you're acting, why don't you? Mm -hmm. And um, Jeffrey Holder, who just passed away, it was Punjab, and it was just, um, it was a beautiful, beautiful film of a great musical, and um, I love those kids. 
Um, I love Tim Curry. I love Bernadette Peters. I, I just oh, believed it. And it was able, and I was able in my house to play, and I was able to play uh, those scenes. So a lot of my childhood was a mix of like, you know, the, you take Cleopatra, for instance, there's a million other examples. Mm -hmm. Annie, for instance, it's a powerful example, but there are a million others. Something light, but quite serious, and something, you know, you know, spectacle and very melodramatic. Um, you know, with Roots and Dryden and Shakespeare. There's all kinds of stuff in these two films, for example, that were very important to me. I played them out constantly, all day, every day, and that, and that, that feeling of make-believe, of using the pipes to pretend it's the orphanage, and you know, using a, an old carpet to roll myself up in and be rolled out as Cleopatra, and mm -hmm. you know, and that is, and I loved, you know, I loved make believe. I loved seeing myself as those people, and I, I, I saw it as a craft. I don't know how old. I mean, young, you know, um, but it and it also was an escape. You know, it's, it also was a was a was a fantastic, magnificent healing escape from you know from from trauma or you know not boredom it's but but from you know from 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 you know reality that was painful you know from um you know it was an escape it was mm -hmm. definitely an escape um i will say around the same time a little bit later maybe seven or eight um i guess i was eight i was not yet eight I was in the movie theater, I would be dropped off at the movies or I would get there somehow and I would stay all day, I would sneak into the movies. I would sneak, I would go to four or five back in the day when you could. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing Working Girl in the uh -huh. theater by myself, I, I was seven, movie. I was almost eight. And I remember Carly Simon singing Let the River Run at the beginning and uh -huh. it's, she's so great and collaborated with Mike Nichols several times. She got, you know, that's that golden thread. They, you know, mm -hmm. he always worked with the same people. He found people that were magnificent, that got it. So is Woody and Allen. He, he, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he took them with him and vice versa. I saw his name mm -hmm. on the screen, directed by Mike Nichols. It's like in white and silver and it, that's a, that's a moment that changed everything. It, cha it changed everything. There was something in there. I remember sitting in the theater. I remember my soul, the center of my heart, my, my cells, my soul, everything kind of, you know, it, 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 like it's a bullseye. It hit right in that moment. Everything opened up and I thought quietly and succinctly, this is, this is it. This is the thing. This is true north. Uh -huh. You and that's knew it right there in that moment. It, that was your. This was, was your. Path. That was the mo That was the moment, and incredible. And he has been true north mm -hmm. e ever since, for me. Mm -hmm. Always, the, you know, always. He's the, you know, the only, I mean, I, and I love that what we get to do as artists is we get to, you know, revere and love those that came before us or that guide us, but we make things our own. You know, we just, that's all we can do. You know, we cannot be anyone else or we cannot, you know, Try we can just borrow, you know, we can, we can, you know, homage, you know, love, borrow, you know, love, serve, remember, right. but we make it our own. That said, in tandem with that, with Mike Nichols, um, stage and film, he's the he's the only artist of any kind, you know, like sort of a hundred percent of the time. For some reason, I would see his work, and it it looked and felt exactly as I would imagine it myself. It was like you know that's true north, you know, but better, but better, but but realized, you know, but there it is, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, and he, yeah, he's just guided me so much. Um, and a story about Elizabeth uh, Kemp that is maybe my favorite story about her. I have many. She was my dearest friend for almost 10 years. Um, but, you know, a lot of our relationship, you know, some of it was professional, but a lot of it was personal and very private. This story is, is perhaps my favorite. Mike Nichols passed away in November of 2015, shortly after his 80 fourth birthday I think and it was seven o'clock in the morning and I was asleep in my apartment and the phone rang and it was Elizabeth and it's that early in the morning I answered the phone it's too early to, right. for it not to be important and I answered and she was crying she was really sobbing 
and she said she said she couldn't get out the words for a few seconds. She said, "Mike Nichols, Mike Nichols," and she said, "Mike Nichols is dead." And we both started to cry. She was calling me because she didn't because she didn't want me to be out on the subway or in public and look at my phone and see, and it, see it and be alone or be or be be in the maddening horror of 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 the of public you know and have and have to negotiate that moment mm -hmm. with people around in a supermarket or in a you know in Trader Joe's or subway, you know on the whatever. subway and it just and so she just she just she was telling me so that she could hold the space for me and she knew that it was a great dream to work with him mm -hmm. um, and she knew that he you know and so she knew she told you know she told me a story about how now that he he has passed away that he could guide me even more than perhaps he could in this life and certainly you know that and and perhaps even more than he already has you know as a dreamer and an artist and a you know and a lover of excellence and the truth and it was just it just was like that's that's what kind of a friend she was, you know, that's how she, that's her part of the golden thread. Like, she just got it. She got it. You know, she got it. She knew, you know, she got it and it didn't, you didn't have to be, you know. Effortless. It was nothing that it was. She, she remembered. She, she would. When you spoke, she remembered. Yes. You know, and that's something yeah. that is, uh, you know, not everybody has that. No. Not everybody listens. No, you know, but nobody cares. Everybody's yeah. too wrapped up in themselves, yeah. slurring. Yeah, that nobody wants to listen. You yeah. have a whole world in front of you, around you, and we shut it out because we are only concerned about what we have to say, or what we have to think, or what we do, um, or how do I look? Or how do or I look? And it, how do and, I sound? And that was the great thing. And, the, and and another one of the greatest things about Elizabeth is that she let, she helped empower you to have all of that. Right. That it's wonderful. Look, you know, she was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman. No one cared more about her Venus, uh -huh. you know, than or exuded her Venus more than Elizabeth. But, you know, that you could have both. That you could, you know, that you could care about looking beautiful and being beautiful, or being feminine, or being whatever that whatever that was for you. You know, if it was right. being tough, it was. It didn't have to be that. Mm -hmm. But that you could be you in all of your exquisite glory. And but listen. Listen. You know, be somebody, be a partner. You know, what is going on? You know, what are we working on? What is happening? You know, it's, you know, I, I, I mean, you know, what's that Neil Simon play where it's, uh, God, uh, Sylvester Stallone is in the movie running across, um, God, not laughter on the 23rd floor. It's the, it's the one where she's robbed in the beginning. It's a, it's, who God. was in it? I don't, I'm not. No, I'm totally forgetting it right now, but it's a comedy. It's going to come And to it you. takes place, a, a prisoner of Second Avenue. And she's like, but she's been robbed. I mean, she keeps you in. Uh -huh. She keeps you in. What is going on? You know, how can we inform that? And it's, it's um, you know, the greatest, most magnificent avatars and emissaries of spirit and creator and the light, you know, are those people that can bring in all of that. Yeah. You know, they it's can magic. bring in like they can bring in the selfish parts of us uh -huh. and empower us and and and, and and remind us and help us, you know, remember where we are, you know, but you're where are you? You know, who's with you? You know, these are circumstances and these are, you know, this is actor stuff. But actor stuff is life stuff. You know, that's, that's what, you that's know, well the method teaches us. And that's what, you know, I mean, I'm not an expert on the method, though I have a great, you know, though it's, it's basically how I work. And I have a great, great respect and reverence for that work. And, you know, and, and you know, Lizzie taught that way and was a great, you know, was a great teacher and performer in that field as well as other fields. And, you know, acting is life, you know, I mean, the greatest teach us that. You know, uh, when you talk about Mike Nichols, I, they were showing on HBO the documentary. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it when you know the beginning and how he started as a comedian, um, in the sense of timing. But I liked his story when he describes Brando when he saw him on the street, guy named Desire. Yeah, he couldn't. And, and they, the they, they couldn't move. They, they couldn't, they couldn't move. move. 
they couldn't move, and that's a seminal moment. Yeah, I mean, to see that. It was it was a seminal moment for me to see. It was the penultimate thing he directed on Broadway before he passed away. The last thing was Betrayal, um, but the second to last thing was a, was a, was a miraculous production of Death of a Salesman. Oh, I missed that. With Phil Hoffman and yeah, John I Glover as his brother and the great Linda Eamond and Andrew Garfield and Finn Wintrock, Whitrock, sorry, Finn. Um, and he he got it, and he and and I I, I was able through my darling friend um, Patricia Bosworth mm -hmm. um, to meet him backstage after one of the times I saw it, and he 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 knew he got it, and it, and it was like that. I mean, it was, and I think that was the other show that he saw so many years ago. It was Death of a Salesman mm -hmm. and Streetcar. I think that he that he references he in that references yeah, like yeah. a turning yeah. point because yeah. even every student he says a reactor, everybody who was in the craft when they when they saw Brando, they couldn't they never seen anything like it. That he was a hundred percent that he was emotion acting from there. Emo from his emotions. Yeah, it it's very so hard to do. I mean, no one does that. Kim Stanley. Yeah. You know, I'm not even I mean Geraldine Page maybe. I mean I'm talking out of, maybe out of school, but I think Kim Stanley, you know, I love, you know, I love, I love Carl Malden. Oh, I am another such one. A big yes, fan. another one. I mean, those. Oh, and, God. And, I mean, and to be able to see, you know, those plays first. You know, I mean, who like I, I believe this was a story from Elizabeth. I've never had the pleasure of talking to him about it, but I remember talking about the wonderful James Lipton with Elizabeth one day, and she said to me. Uh, she said to me, he saw Lorette Taylor in, he, he saw the original Glass Menagerie. And I always meant to ask him about that, but these, you know, these, these seminal moments in American theater. Mm -hmm. um, They're so meaningful and that are so That are so meaningful and so unforgettable. But, that, but that's the great thing. And, and certainly, like, if I could, you know, it's such a fun game to play of, you know, if you, if you, I love music, I do it with music as well. If you could go back in time, you know, what concerts would you see? You know, what, what, you know, what theater would you see? You know, you know, would you want to see Duzo? Would you want to see, you know, would you see Brando? You know, all of these, you know, it, all of these examples. And the answer is yes, of course, indubitably there are a million, but, um, you know, with great plays, they live and they right. live and you know and you know you know and some like you know you know Arthur Miller is a great example of someone that is a total genius was totally magnificent everything he wrote was interesting and a lot of stuff that that he wrote in the 60s and the 70s was sort of you know was lambasted by the press unfairly and the fact you know and you know yes. and 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 the fact that that it's they, they belong to us to work on again and again and again and you know the greatest plays you know they draw you the most beautiful map you know and that's that's the great thing about it you know and that's why that's how the work goes on and on you know that 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 you know new plays are being written but the you know but the Chekhov you know it he just draws you the most detailed map. It's perfection. You know, you've just got to get in, get into the work. You know, but it's just he just draws you. The greatest writers draw you the most detailed, magnificent, colored map. Do you see the work on? I think it was Mike Nichols who directed. And we're talking about the craft, but we can't help to talk about about Mike Nichols. No, we love you, Mike. Is, is just she loves and honors. Uh, Mr. Nichols, but I, I think he directed The Seagull for the public. He did. He directed he The did, Seagull. And he did, and I directed... went to see that play twice yes. in Meryl Streep. Yes. Um, Natalie Philip Portman. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Natalie Portman, Kevin Kline. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Um, oh, Christopher Walken. I remember seeing Christopher Walken. i never seen him on stage, and it was such a big impression. Well, for me, he's also, so relaxed. He, it was, it was so. He's so relaxed he's on stage. So he's so relaxed yeah, on stage. Very, that is shocking. You cannot even believe how. Yeah, he's remarkable. He he's is. really interesting, and he. That's a. It's a really great example. I mean, any of, any of Mike's work is, I believe, but he really believed. Um, he believed that like ninety percent of you know getting th something together like that, like the casting was so important. important. Right. It was so important. You have to get it right. Like if you did because that if you don't right, get it right, then you they miss do, the then whole they, movie. Right, then you, yeah, I mean, if you did that right, then it, you know he then it's it's like it's it's already there. You know, it's it's like 
it's the golden thread. It's God. It's like it's just it's all it already. It's not that there's not work to be done, and but it's but you know you cast your actors and you trust them, and if they're there, then they can do the job, and you know and you guide them. But if it but if if you if you get those parts correct, then right. you know you the magic is Takes free place. to unfold. And it and he he was certainly a great lover of Chekhov, and and was a great you know and 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 greatly greatly revered and respected that map that was drawn. I I, I saw another wonderful production of um, Ethan Hawke and Jolie Richardson and um, Ivanov um, at the, oh, at the CSC, at the classic, I classic, I think it was directed yeah. by Pendleton, right, uh, uh, by, by, by Austin man. Pendleton, Austin. yes, exactly, Our love him, yes, yeah, love, him, love him, a great Chekhov scholar, and I remember Another seeing one. Mike in the audience, um, uh -huh. you know, I remember seeing Mike in the audience that night, and you know, and just sort of knowing I was in the right place and also feeling that golden thread of just, you know, just, you know, you, where you're connected, you know, you, you know, go where it's warm. And that's what Elizabeth does when she suggests a role that you work on, when she suggests, it's like, it's, it's, and it's like that, I will say that to myself, I will say that to friends, like if you're stuck or you don't know what you're doing, it's the sort of, it can, it sounds a little cheesy, but it's, it's like doing a vision board. It's like, it's like, you know, what your soul needs to restore yourself. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, when people ask me, oh, what is 1111? I love that number. Elizabeth loved that number. I, I say, you, you know what it is. It's the true, it's, ma it's magic. You know. You know who you are. You know what hurts. You know, you know, you know, and Elizabeth's work and this very, very deep work, it gets you in and, you know, you go to places that you didn't know you could go and you come out whole again and you come out with it, you know, having greeted your shadow and shaken its hand instead of letting it destroy you and then you can use it for your work and, you know, inform the character that you're working on. But you know, you know, and so when somebody, including myself, is stuck in life, you know, you make a vision board, you make a vision board in your soul, you make a vision board, you know, you know, with your poetry and your notebook. You know, what color? For me, you know, it's, is, it the, is it the ocean? Is it the turquoise ocean? What do you need to do? You point in the direction that you want your energy to go in and you walk there. How do you walk there? What do you love? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's like, you know, that, that was the introduction into working with her and working on characters with her. She's, you know, pick something, you know, pick pick somebody that you feel the closest to. You know, not just like you know. I've always wanted to. You know, I always wanted to take a stab at Hedda Gabler. You know, which would be amazing for you, by the way. You but think? I. But, yeah, Elizabeth but can't you know, which, it to which me, is by the fine. Way. You know, which is fine. And and you know, sometimes you're working. You know, you're working on a role for a movie. And sometimes it's like you know. Sometimes it's like you. It's you're just doing what you're doing. But the first. But the but the invitation into the work was, you know, pick somebody that you cannot not play. Uh-huh. I picked Hamlet first, you know. I, I pick, love Hamlet. You know, pick somebody that you're gonna die uh -huh. if you don't get to play. Uh-huh. You know, and then, you know, and it's not, no, and it's not always like that. And sometimes we need to try on different hats and you need to get a little more versatile, but, but you start there. You know, you start there, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's easier uh, to make it the most important thing when it's, you know, when it's so close, you know, and it's, um, you know, so that's what she did. You have so you know? much to say, Lauren. It's incredible, I'm sorry, but you it's my do... Sagittarius. No, I can't no, stop. No, I, I know, love and it. about Mike Nichols no, and Elizabeth no, Kemp. No, it's I like know. listen, you know, just... Lauren. Is the bottom line is you're loaded, and we think <laughs> and we talk and feel. Uh, this is we connected every time that we just have a conversations. We don't need to have a camera in front of us to just let the the, the soul and your mind speak. We love uh, art. We love art. Yeah, we love real, the real hey, deal. Hey, we're yeah. passionate. Yeah, we love passion. And we love fire. Fire. <laughs> and we like to burn. Yeah. And your the, the beauty of what you're describing, the eloquency is uh, untouchable. I just want to obviously hear you talking because you know the craft, you have wisdom, and God knows that you read. Unfortunately, not a lot of actors like to read much. Maybe we don't have time because we're too caught up in bills and problems <laughs> and caught up in love affairs. And who's going to be my date Friday night? I wish. Night? <laughs> I wish. Listen, listen, you guys have to live in the moment. Uh, Loring is somebody who loves um, acting very much. And we had uh, our conversations about the craft um, and, of course, about Kemp. 
now that she's gone, um, when you wake up in the morning, when you open your eyes and when she comes to you, what images come to you from camp? What moments? Because <laughs> she comes very often, and God knows that I was not as close as you guys were, um, but she comes to me in, in the most unpredictable moments when I'm holding my piggies at night and I got my babies in bed. Uh, but like very specific moments, she comes in and you're like a little girl, Susie. Don't let anybody ever change that. Um, I don't know, like little things that I feel oppressing. But in your case, how does she come to you? You know, it's interesting. I, as you know, but your viewers might not know, I lost my mom. Yes. Three weeks before Lizzie died, um, which Elizabeth, which put me in a different place, zip code. Yeah. As she was passing, yeah. um, I was already in the zip code of loss, mm -hmm. um, which, for which I'm grateful, because I, I, I try, I, I was able to just be a little bit of service. I think, at least to myself, at least to my uh, myself, and you know, hopefully, hopefully to her. Um, but both her and my mother, very strong. They're spirits. not extremely strong spirits, you know. Very, you know, similar in some ways, polar opposites in others. Both very, very beautiful and both geniuses. Um, they're because not. Elizabeth Camp. Sorry for interrupting, but I'm gonna dare to interrupt. Mm -hmm, please. Elizabeth Camp was a genius. Yes. I just want to say that I know that open discussion for whatever might be the case. Yeah. I want to a, say Yeah, it's not a it, like maybe, it's it, true. It, she was a genius. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And your mother didn't have the yeah. privilege to yeah. know, but yeah, I know the same. It's and the she same. knew it. Both women knew it and had to deal with it, you know? And this is like things are changing. This isn't, uh, you know, and this isn't a conversation about the world right now what we're going into, but you know, things are th th this is a Things are breaking open in a lot of ways in the last couple of months, but um, you know it's very, very, very difficult. It's very, you know, it's, the air is really rarefied up there when you're very, very smart like these two women in my life, and and they had to deal with it, and you know, and it wasn't easy, and you know, and it and it's lonely, um, and you know, and it and that wasn't a mystery to either of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they and never met, right, Laura? They never we met. About this, they they never, never met. met, and I was thinking about this on the the drive here. Is that when my mother had her first real medical emergency in May? I was living in Los Angeles, and I was getting my affairs in order to join my brother, who had her, and she was asleep. So I knew, like, they had her. So I I knew it was right for me to get things in order so that I could be here for a long time and that there was nothing for me to do there yet and that my brother had her, that God had her, and, you know, the second she opened her eyes, I, I would be on New York soil, mm -hmm. which I was. But I called Elizabeth and she knew it was, you know, it was the day after the anniversary of her mom's death. And it was just, I mean, it was something, it was a very connected, beautiful moment. And she said, do you, do you want me to go up there? And I thought on the way mm. here today, how, you know, what a wonderful um, offer that was. And that I actually wish I had said yes, just because the idea of them being Meeting. in the same room. I mean, my mother was not awake at the time, but just, just the idea of the, the alchemy of those two energies was, um, you know, exciting and, and love, you know, warming to me. And the idea of the two of them in spirit somewhere to get, you know, in, you know, in spirit world at the same time is, is is very special to me and them being reunited with um you know with their moms and um you know their deep deep loved ones is very special to me Unfortunately, i'm doing a lot of editing and he's just not in all the work and everything else. And we're gonna hide. Is Joey boots. here? He's here. He's in Germany. He's now. training. He went to Norway, and Germany. Are you and joining him at, at he, some point, or he, he comes back? He's coming back Sunday. Oh, good. Okay. But then he's gonna leave again because of another fight. So, he's it's gonna be a lot of traveling. But it's good. We I love him. Good. Does he know I love him? Of Did course. He... <laughs> 
I said, oh man, Lauren, he's gorgeous. He said that you look like a model from back from the 60s. No, really? You do. You have that Jane Fonda, Brigitte Rador. Yeah, the 60s is what I channel. Baby. I'm happy that it works. Yeah, thank you. This thank him. It's you. Yeah. Julie Christie. Julie Christie. My, my mom, like that's my mom really looked like Julie, Julie Christie. Christie. Yeah. What a gorgeous woman. That's you. I'm that's a little you. more Italian, like a little more European. More Brigitte yeah. Bardot, more French. God bless. Love. Love everybody. Love. Love. Love, love. love. love the compliments. Say love to you. What's that, baby? Love the compliments. Love the, yeah, love everything. Yeah, why not? You know, you know, like we were talking with Sash. Yeah. Animosity. You see, once again, I want to make sure that we do, because we need to start, but you see the contrast with the lighting in the two shots? Yes. Yeah, because then she's wearing dark. I gotta get rid. Can we open up a little bit? Yeah. She has to look, please, Susan. It's to contrast. I need a little more light. Isn't this beautiful, though? I got gorgeous. this. gorgeous. Yesterday, eBay. It's Michael Kors cashmere. Oh. I got it on eBay for $30. Oh. Feel. I love it. And I, I love that material. And it looked like malachite. You know that stone where it's like black and green. It's I like don't an know earth stone. About stones, no, it's a really simple stone. It's like turquoise. It's not expensive, but it's called malachite, and it's black and dark green. And it I thought it's per for her. Yeah, I thought it's perfect. My girl, right? It looks beautiful. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Right? Yeah. yeah. If we can just adjust it a little yes, bit. I can. Thank you, Richard. You know what? We should move you into the light. Yeah. Mm. That's what the problem is. I like that uh, Led Zeppelin song. Oh. <laughs> this woman and that, yeah. If we can have it right in there. You moved out of your light, too, I'm out of my light? That's okay. That's, I'm not even going to see myself enough. She's very bright. Actually. Don't worry about it. Don't oh, want no. any light. But I want her. She's the objective. <laughs> in those 60s, the what hair looks perfect. Right, you got to see Tootsie, you Sash. You with the shot? What? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Now, with the no, movie Tootsie. Tootsie. <laughs> Susan. No, you. Baby, listen, if you want to so experiment good. a little bit with the camera when you, I know that it's a lot, but if you want to go tighter when she's, you can do it. Okay, you can just go a little, you know, in and out. Um, and yeah. <sighs> Richard, we love you. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Please do kick our butt. I don't know who's coming next, but uh, we'd like to see if we can go for 35 minutes. All right. Please. Me. Who's coming? So. Really? Okay, good. I Thank you. So. I need to have it. Please, Richard, please, please. Allow me to finish. The sound, Susan Finelli, double check that it's not muffled because I have the scarf because it's so cold. No, the sound is good. The problem is her camera is not a robotic camera. Okay. And if I do with the robotic camera, I can only get her side to make the change. Okay. So we're going to keep it in one single shot? Yeah, and then the two of you together. Because otherwise, this is not a robotic camera. What happens if I do switch and she sits in my chair? Would you she be able to chair. do that? Yeah, let's Yeah, do because yeah. she's the guest, she's the priority. So we do that. See, with you, you look in the camera. Yeah. So Look at the camera, whatever. but I, I need, I, I want you to play. Is it just, is it just to, like so? Is this, so. yeah, okay. I don't know how does it look Sorry, like. My underwear it, showing. <laughs> does it make sense, Susan? Sorry. If, <laughs> Susan? Tell me if it makes sense, if it's, if it's not too complicated, baby. Yeah, I'm up there. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, can be, you can pull out a little bit. You can, whatever you well, want to do. First, I have to do your eyes. So yeah. give me your eyes, okay? I'm here. Yeah, so we can, you know, you can play with the camera with, with uh, Lauren. Open your eyes. Yeah, I'm open my eyes. Yeah, Tootsie, you got to watch it, Sash. It's beyond you Charles have to, Journey. Baby, Charles you Journey. need to get your ass, go home. And just fucking watch the movie. Yeah, watch it's on it. something. You can you can rent it for like three dollars on Amazon or yeah. something. Take it's yeah. At, but now you I'll can't see this. Edit. That's okay, baby. I don't care if I don't see myself. That's that's uh, you know. Oh, but maybe you can do that. We were talking about I played Friar for Elizabeth in America. 
It's great. Yes. It's great. It's great. It's oh, awesome. beautiful. It's what a perfect. beautiful part for Everything you. Everything you do. It's such a is that play. Gloria Messer? It's perfect. I mean, it's not yeah. like that Everything never happens. Everything you do is perfect. 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 I'm sorry for changing things around a little bit, Susan. Yeah. I never even explored that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like putting on makeup or dressing, all that. It just, he goes wild. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And that's what we were talking yeah. about. I had three hour makeup sessions in yeah. rehearsal because I used to do my own makeup. Yeah. And then learn how to walk in pencil heels, learn the femininity, you know, wow. the feminine part of me, and like all of that. And it was. Well, I have to change this camera. It just. It cha yeah. changed my being. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, you had all that all along. Right. That's what's magnificent. It just yeah. added so much. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's that was amazing. The first thing Elizabeth threw at me. Yeah, right. It goes She's right in. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. She's like, let's go there. Yes. Yeah. Like, okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, her hits are never wrong when she just, yeah, she knows. Yeah. yeah she knows. And she knows what's in your backyard, even if you don't know yeah. yet, you know. Again, my second piece I worked on her was Bengal Tiger and everyone was telling me not to work on it and Elizabeth and I are talking and she's like what do you want to work on I was like I don't want to work on the tiger yeah she's like, go for it. then do it yeah it yeah. looks very yeah. good I got an agent yes for my showcase excellent it was excellent like that. sorry was Susan for changing things on this yeah. one yeah she would never I lead you astray yeah exactly the, you know. yeah that's amazing it's a great play my friend Arian did it it was his, he did it on Broadway. He did it with Rajiv in L.A. Like, he, 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 he Rajiv wrote it, and the, the whole cast that, except for Robin Williams, that, that were friends with him, that he created it with, went to L.A. and kind of, nur you know, nurtured it for three months, and then they all, I think almost everybody came to Broadway, except for Robin, joined late, and yeah. kind of gave it the star power that it needed to get on Broadway, but it was a beautiful experience. He's a beautiful man. I mean... Yeah, that play. Wow. When we talk about knowledge, this one. Well. Yes, Lauren. And not, not to mention that your sensitivity is uh, Lauren, there, can you look baby. at camera three, please, and give me your eyes? Beautiful. She looks like a doll. Oh. <laughs> You see, yeah. uh, that's what I wanted to get with you. So when I didn't have that exactly, I said, you know what? You're going to be looking at the camera. That's why I made the adjustment. But it looked beautiful, Sash. Thank you. You happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. I'm happy being you better be. <laughs> you better be. I'm now going to Do you like this shot? Ass. I love it. She's gorgeous. That's what I want. Um, keep it on. If you want, like I said, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, Susan, whatever feels more comfortable for you, girl, you're the queen, please do. She's the main objective, obviously, so I, I want to make sure that, you know, you play oh, with it a little bit. Yeah, zoom, you do that. Zoom you're, right in on, <laughs> yes. on my bees. And your babies. My 34 bees. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm covering my babies. Huh? They get attention. Boobies, let me tell you, are so powerful. You gotta watch that movie again. Let me know when we're ready to start. You watch when he goes Tootsie. He goes for his audition to oh the studio. Oh my god! Oh my god! And they're so close. So the woman who's casting the show said to the guy in the control room, "Okay, how far you can pull back?" <laughs> <laughs> and the guy said, "How about Cleveland? <laughs> Knock it off." <laughs> Baby, listen, if you can do comedy, you can do anything. Okay? Yeah. That's a masterpiece. Yeah, it really Am is. Am I right, Lord? Yeah, Charles Durning is so good. It's a ma you need to watch it. You need to get your ass. And as soon as you watch it, you're going to be texting me. I'll do it. Okay. Uh, Sash, do me a favor, please. Yeah. You see the hair? Like this one hair, the wisp, a little bit. Yeah, the, the I don't want it to be wisp. distracting. This, yeah, that, yeah. A little bit. If not, you get a little drop of water. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Good. It's just a, you know. I know. A little, just a little, 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 little. We're gonna start, Susan. You're gorgeous, gorgeous, <sighs> gorgeous woman. 
uh, I love that movie. Tootsie is oh, it's one. It's so great. It's, no, it's a, it's a it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. It's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, which never happens. I mean, it's like Shakespeare in Love or something like, uh -huh. or Angels in America uh -huh. that Mike Nichols did. I mean, it's like, it's Perfection. perfect. Is this good? Do it's you want to look in the monitor? So it's you can good, tell baby. Me? It's good. It's yeah. much yeah, better. Yeah, those wisps, like if it's there, you stare and at you that's stare what, at yeah, it. Yeah, I know. And it takes the I attention know. away. Yep. Yep. As Elizabeth would say, it takes you out. It <laughs> takes you out. Right on. Takes you out. You guys ready out We're there? ready to go, baby. And you can shut the door, Sash. What a wonderful spirit. Sash. I love you so much. I love you so yeah. wonderful. So wonderful. He's my new favorite person. Okay. Sissy, I want to ask you to sit up straight. Okay. Okay? I'm here. All right. So we're ready. We're going in five, four, three, two. Smile. Go. <laughs>